I wanted to talk about the week three project. Uh, it's been revised a little bit for this semester. And um, it's really almost exactly the same uh, content and questions uh, organized a little bit different. And I had to just change again since um, a lot of the classes are not uh, meeting on campus. So it's more uh, set up for the online uh, courses. And uh, so um, let's take a look at this. And again, this is uh, same idea. We're collecting some data. And then we, we want to do some things with that data uh, that is kind of leading us into uh, inferential statistics. We talked a lot about uh, descriptive statistics, and uh, we're not getting rid of that. We'll still see some things in here. Uh, and in general, uh, we're still following the same process. So remember that statistics, you know, you go out and you collect data, you organize data, you interpret that data. You draw some conclusions and make some inferences, and, and you know we're kind of doing that here. Uh, and you'll see it says for for this semester, all students will use the same questions and data set for the Unit Three project. Now, normally uh, or previously, uh, the students went out and they kind of collected their own data, and they could be on anything. Uh, so this time. Remember that you're not going out and collecting any data. I've already done that. So if you look at the second page, you'll see here's your set of data values. So these were uh, 30 data values from student responses. Okay. So everybody uses that same table. Uh, and that's what it says here. It's, it's one question uh, and elicits or you know is requiring a numeric value. So let's look here under the questions. It says, how much do you spend on gas each week and automobile gasoline? Uh, so people would respond numerically. They would say like $20 or $30 or $50 or so on. So we were getting numbers. And then it says, uh, the other question is non-numeric, limited to two possible responses. So the non-numeric question that was asked, um, and again, each person was asked both questions. Each each of the 30 students, uh, I asked uh, both questions to. So they said how much they spent on gas, like $50 or something. And then they, do you think professional sports are fixed? And that was just a question. And, you know, however it was interpreted, that, that was, you know, just however it came out. But the responses were non-numeric, meaning they answered with something other than a number, like yes or no in this case. So there were only two choices, and that's what that means up here, limited to two possible responses. Do you think professional sports are fixed? They could only say yes or no. That was it. Okay. So 30 people asked both questions, responses are recorded, and then... You answer the questions based off of this data here that was collected. Okay. So, and you'll see some of these are questions from, you know, we talked about before. This is a descriptive statistics. You know, you um, have to define your variables. And it says, is the numeric variable qualitative or quantitative? So, you know, if somebody says how much you spent on gas and, and they're responding like this, are these qualitative responses or quantitative responses? Okay. And then number two says, is, is the numeric variable discrete or continuous? So when you say how much do you spend, is that discrete or continuous variable? So again, this is kind of review. We've done this before. Is the numeric variable at the nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio level of measurement, right? So you got to respond and pick one of those again. Okay, so now here's descriptive statistics, right? The measure central tendency, measures of variability. You have the mean, standard deviation, sample size. 
And degrees of freedom is new. Standard error of the means is something new. Well, how do you get the mean and standard deviation? So, well, we're going to have to take all these data values and plug them into the calculator. So you're going to go into your calculator and go stat and edit. And let's see, I've got to clear out. I'm going to hit clear, enter. Now I've got a clear list here. So, so you're going to take and you're going to type all these data values in. So 35, 35, enter, 65, enter, 40, enter, and so on, right? So, so you're going to type all these in. There's 30 of them, and you should end up with 30 down this list here, right? I'm not going to do that right now. And um, I'm going to, I am going to clear this other list while I'm thinking about it. So I don't highlight L2, hit clear, enter. I'm just getting rid of those. Okay, so we'll assume we got them <coughs> all typed in. Uh, and then to get the mean and standard deviation, remember that once you get all these typed in, you go to stat, calc, one of our stats, right? It's, that's the one we want. We hit enter. The list, the data is in L1. If it's not, it says L1 here, you put in L1. The frequency list is just get that out of there, right? Delete. We don't want anything in there for the frequency list. Calculate. And you have your mean right there's the sample mean x bar is the sample mean 46 i just round it to 46.7 it's good enough and then the standard deviation is here s equal to this is the sample standard deviation 16.1 we'll round that off too sample size is three and now degrees of freedom is not on your calculator, but degrees of freedom, remember, is n minus 1. It's your sample size minus 1. And then the standard error of the means is something that you should be able to compute. We talked about it in, in the unit 3. That's the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Okay, that's the formula for the standard error, which is a little bit different than the standard deviation. It's the standard deviation of a sampling distribution of the means. But basically, you just take the standard deviation that you get here, divided by the square root of the sample size. Okay. And then, uh, let's see. This is just something you should remember. Assume your data is normally distributed. What percent of your data values fall within one standard deviation of your sample mean? So you got to go back to the empirical rule and look that up. All right. So remember that there were percentages associated with plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three standard deviations about that mean in a normal distribution. Okay. Now, number 10. Assume your distribution is normal. Again, find the cutoff score for the top 20% of your data values. So find the cutoff score. And then, you know, we did some problems in the homework where we said you had to go to distribution. When it says find the cutoff score, you're going to use inverse norm. Enter. Area to the left. That says top 20%, right? So we got to put a number in here. And then mean, I'm going to, I'm just making this mean up. I'm going to make the mean up. I'll put a 44 and then standard deviation is 11. Okay. And then I'll go down. Because what that'll do is give me the cutoff score for the 80th percentile, which means there's 20% above that. And then area some calculators don't have this left thing in there that's the newest ones if you don't have left by default it goes to the left okay so I'm gonna, so there's my cutoff score right there 53 points whatever 
Okay, so that's, again, this is kind of review for the test here because these problems are going to be on the test. Degrees of freedom, standard error, what percent of your data is fall within on an empirical rule. Make sure you look that up. Uh, find your cutoff score. You're going to have to do a problem like that. Standardize the first score. So remember, to standardize the score, Now, let's, uh, what was the first score? All right, 35. It was my first score, 35, okay? Oh, and let's go with the standard Z score. And, oh, there it is, okay. Z equal to X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So Z equal to X, that first score was 35 minus, and again, I'm making up because I'm not, I, I don't want to do the problems for you. That's what you're supposed to do. So again, 44, I just made up, but you put your sample mean there, sample standard deviation there, and you would figure out what this is. So I'm going to clear this and I'm going to do what? 35 minus 44, enter, divided by 11, enter, negative 0.82. So that would be the standard score, negative 0.82z equal negative 0.82. Two. That's for what that's basically saying is is that that first score of 35 is 0 .18, 0 0.82 standard deviations below the mean. The mean is uh, in the middle right there. This is you can see 35 is less than 44. It's below 34 on the number line. Well, how far below is it? Well, you could say well it's nine. Well, yeah, that is nine, but in terms of statistics, we like to talk in terms of distances, in terms of standard deviation. So, so this is 0.82 standard deviations below the middle. Okay. All right. So, find a percentile for the first score in the data set. Find the percentile number twelve. All right. All right, well, let's take a look at that. So when you find percentile, that's percent, that's how much, you know, how many values are at or below some given value. And there's normal distribution. We assume it's normal. Here's the middle, 44. Again, I'm, I'm just making this up. So don't think, oh, you got the wrong answer because you didn't get 44. No, that's... This is not the mean of that data set, all right? This is not the exact mean of it. Uh, 44, you'll get something else, but you, that's what you, the mean will go there. The first score will be 35, which is in the data set, okay? So we're trying to find how much area is there to the left of 35 in, in this distribution. That'll tell us what percentile or what percent of scores are at or below 35. So we got to go to that function, normal CDF, negative E99, up to 35, mean of 44, standard deviation of 11, and that'll give us that percentage, okay? So you would go in. Uh, to your, uh, whoops, I need the calculator. There it is. All right, so clear this out. So, a second function, distribution, normal CDF. My lower is negative E99. Okay, they have negative 1 E99. You don't have to have that 1, but that's fine. 
the upper is 35 because we're getting that from this. Remember that when we draw the normal curve, it's theoretically goes on infinite. For our purposes, our approximation techniques, we don't see it as infinite. We say it just goes up and stops. It stops at E99 up here on the right and negative E99 down here on the left. Okay. So this shaded region goes from negative E99 to 35. See, negative E99 to 35. Mean standard deviation. And we got to get that typed in to the calculator. And... 11, paste, and again, that would look like that in your calculator. Enter 0.21. So, so that means the area 0.21. 21% of the scores are at or below 35. So 35, 35 is at the... 21st percentile. Okay. So that's the problem. And again, you'll see that on the test. We're doing, we, you know, the project is really gets the review started, right? Helps us get things going. But it only has about half of the stuff that's on the actual test. And then the formative guide will have almost everything listed on there. All right. So let's, uh, let's just Jump back over to here for a minute. Uh, standardize the first score. We did that. Find a percent how we did that. Create a 90% confidence interval about the sample mean. Remember, confidence intervals Okay, confidence intervals you go second uh, let's clear this off for a minute. Let me just get to that. Okay. Go to stat, tests, and then number eight. T interval is going to be our confidence interval for the T distribution or when we're working with sample means. Okay, so I'm going to hit this. Input, we're going to input these stats. And then, see by default, it put them in for us. It automatically, we, since we had them in there before in descriptive statistics, it threw them in. And then you go, again, at three, we know there's a lot more data. There's 30 data values, but I just only put in three. So this is not the right data, but it is the right exact procedure you'll use. And it says do a 90%, so 0 0.90, and then calculate. All right, so there's my confidence interval. 19.57 up to 73.76. So that is the interval right there. That's what you would write there. You know, once you get the real mean and standard deviation, you'll get a confidence interval, you know, and it'll that'll be for that. So that's the that's the quantitative part. That's for this numeric first question. Okay, that's the data there. Let me clear this out. Um, now, use your non-numeric data values, which is the yeses and nos, okay? Yeses and nos. Is your non-numeric variable quantitative or qualitative? Are these numeric or non-numeric, right? They're quantitative, qualitative. Nominal, ordinal, into a ratio level of measurement. This stuff right here, right? You got to put that in. Sample size, well, we, we, you know, we know, we can right there, just count them, tell you how many you got. List the sample proportion for the yes answers. List the sample proportion, meaning count up how many yeses you got and figure that out. List the mean of the yes answers, okay? And list the standard deviation of the yes answers. Well, the mean 
Remember for a binomial distribution, the mean is n times p. So the mean is n, which is, well, I don't want to do the problem for you, but basically there's 30 data values, so you know that. And p, whatever the proportion of yes answers is when you figure that out. I'm going to make it up and say uh, 80. I'm just going to say 80. Okay, again, I made this one up. There's three. So the mean is n times p, which is equal to 3 is 24, right? That's the mean. Remember, the standard deviation of a binomial distribution is n times p times q. And that's when you have to do 30 times p. I made this up 0 0.8, 0 0.20. How do you get q? q is equal to... Q is equal to 1 minus P. These are complements. Remember the binomial distribution. These are complements. They have to add up to 1. And you get the uh, standard deviation for that. And again, this, this one there's not a whole lot to do. Create a 99% 90, confidence interval. All right, so. 99% confidence interval, we go to the calculator, we go to stat, test, confidence interval for the proportions is the one proportion Z interval. You got to put in your X how many yeses there were. Okay, so again, count up how many yeses there were, and I'll say 20. Uh, again, I'll say 20. How many was there? Well, 30. Confidence interval, 0.99, and calculate. And that's it. 0.44 to 0.89. So that's pretty much it. Uh, and uh, you should be able to, you know, get through all that stuff and remember, you know, that if you have to, uh, you know, depending on what semester it is, <clears throat> and if you have to put the uh, answers into uh, Canvas, you know, you just go into Canvas and type in the, um, take the multiple choice quiz by typing, type these answers in to um, Canvas. And uh, unless you're handing them in, in a classroom, and then for those of people that are actually going to a classroom, then uh, they may have to just turn the paper in. So again, it depends on the, the semester. Okay, so uh, again, make sure you work on this and know this because, again, a lot of this stuff's going to be on the exam also. And then we'll talk about the formative guide uh, real soon.